Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2021 Chevrolet Spark, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster base plate kit with removable arms. So you're going to have a total of five main components needed to flat tow your Spark down the road. The first one's going to be your base plate. That's going to provide us with a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. The tow bar is going to be that second component. All right, and that's going to be the physical link that connects the front of your spark to the back of your motorhome. Third main component is going to be safety cables, and these are there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component is going to be tow bar wiring, and what that's gonna do is transfer the lighting signals from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Chevy, uh, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component is going to be a braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your spark whenever you apply the brakes in your motorhome, uh, helping to bring you to a more complete and predictable stop. There are a couple more components that I would suggest picking up. It's just gonna make your flat towing experience that much better. One of them is what's called a automatic battery disconnect. Since the spark requires you to disconnect the battery whenever you're flat towing, uh, that can be kind of troublesome having to get your tools out and do that every time. With the automatic switch, all you're gonna have to do is push a button. It makes it super easy and straightforward. The other one is a uh, what's called a stoplight switch. Since the battery is disconnected, does not have power when you're flat towing, um, your factory brake light switch is not going to work properly, okay? And, and many different braking systems, the majority of the permanent style ones, need a signal from that. And if that's your case, using the uh, stoplight switch is going to provide that signal to our braking systems and everything's gonna flow and work correctly. So this is what uh, everything's gonna look like whenever you're all hooked up and ready to flat tow behind your motorhome. And I really like the setup actually. Uh, everything is spaced apart pretty evenly and it has a nice organized uh, look to it. And because of that, it's gonna be really hard to miss something. You know, a lot of times you might be in a rush, something like that, whenever you're hooking up. And you know, with everything spaced apart, you can kind of take a quick glance at it and make sure uh, it is set up correctly. With that said, the base plate is going to work with uh, most Roadmaster tow bars. In our case, we have the Nighthawk. Uh, it's a great fit, works really well. Um, if you already happen to have a different type of tow bar or manufacturer rather, chances are pretty good, it'll still work. And you can accomplish that by using an adapter that will allow the two to uh, pair together. And you can find those right here at eTrader. So this is what the base plate's gonna look like whenever you're not using it, you know, whenever you're not flat towing behind your motorhome. And I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty noticeable, but these sparks being so small, really don't have a ton of room to work with here, so really no other option. Uh, what's good though, a positive about that, is everything's gonna be very accessible. And ease of use is something that's really important whenever you are flat towing. Something I do really like is the fact that they give you a bracket to not only mount up your wiring, but also your breakaway switch, and that just makes things really convenient. Uh, it's not always the case with all these base plates, you know, and, and with something this compact, uh, that can be a challenge to find a spot to set those components up. But with that being said, whenever you are ready to use it, super straightforward. It's gonna have these removable arms, and all you're gonna have to do is push those in, rotate them about a quarter turn until they lock into place. It's gonna be the same uh, setup over here. And these arms are gonna work the same, whether you have the direct connect like we're showing off here today, or the crossbar style. So once your removable arms are installed, you can actually get your tow bar hooked up. And really quick and simple, really not anything to it. You're just gonna line up the tow bar with the arms here. Put that pin through. followed by this retaining pin. And I wanna mention the crossbar style. Uh, it's gonna be set up pretty much the exact same way. Um, really no difference to it other than that bar being up here. And that's something I would recommend if you had a motor home that was really high up off the ground. And I said because the crossbar style, it's gonna sit up higher, the attachment point is. 
and you'll have less of an angle or need less of a high-low adapter uh, to make sure that your tow bar is level. So at the end of the day, a base plate kit you really can't go wrong with, you know. It's going to be easy to use and uh, get the job done. Now as far as the installation goes, I'm not going to lie, it's relatively involved. It's not the worst one that I've done, but not the easiest. Um, really shouldn't give you a ton of issues, nothing really too complicated about it. it, just takes up a little bit of time. But with that being said, let's go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the front of our vehicle and what we need to do is remove the front fascia, that way we can get our base plate on. With that said, go ahead and pop the hood and then we're going to have uh, a handful of fasteners here along the top edge. We're going to have two 10 millimeter bolts. Pull those out. Then we're going to have a push pin type fastener. And you can get that removed by using a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver. Once I have this out, I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. And from this point on, anything I do to one side of the vehicle, we're also going to repeat on the other side because it'll be set up the same way. Now underneath our vehicle, we're going to have three 10 millimeter head bolts uh, kind of attaching the splash shield here. And we're going to need to remove those. Then along the front edge, we're going to have four seven millimeter head screws on each side. So I went ahead and removed four on the other side already. We can then get these pulled out. Then once you get that last one removed, you can pull back on this, lower it down, and set it to the side. So now if you look at our wheel wall liner here along this edge, we're going to have two plastic push pin type fasteners. So again, we'll grab our trim tool and get both of these removed. Once you have those fasteners removed, if you kind of pull back on your wheel wall liner, up here at the corner where your fascia meets the quarter panel, you're going to have a seven millimeter head screw that you can pull out. Now at the next set of hands, you can actually remove our fascia. What I've done here is just put some painters tape along the edge. That way we don't, you know, have to worry about scratching anything up on accident. But what you're going to do is just going to kind of pull on the corner and release the clips. Sometimes you may have to take a flathead screwdriver or something and just kind of pry on the clip. So that's what I was pushing on. Push it down and that should help it release. And then with that said, we can kind of work our way around. Once you get like in the middle of the headlight, you are gonna have to kind of lift up and pull out. And you wanna be careful not to pull out too far. You may have some type of connectors. And in this case we do, just going to pull back on that red tab, push down on the center, and that should free it. Now we can go ahead, set our fascia off to the side so we're safe. With the fascia out of the way, if we move here just above our bumper beam, you need to remove four plastic push pin fasteners that's connecting this air dam to our core support. We'll grab our trim tool and pull all those out. on each side of our vehicle, just underneath the bumper beam, we're going to have one more push pin type fastener. We need to get removed as well. 
We're now going to disconnect our ambient air temperature sensor, which is this right here. You're gonna have a tab on the back. You can kind of just pull out on it and separate it. And then we're just going to kind of separate the wiring from this plastic dam. Just have a couple push pins along there. So we're gonna have one up there as well. Once that's free, you kind of just drape it off to the side for now. Now on each side of the vehicle, uh, this lower bumper brace, I guess you could call it, we're gonna remove it and you can pull out these three 13 millimeter bolts. So I went ahead and got the other side removed already. So once that's done, you can kind of just pull it out and remove it from the vehicle. Just so we can get this part out of the way, we can now trim uh, this part of this plastic uh, shroud here. There's a diagram and the instructions telling you where to cut. And each side similar. You're going to go pretty much about halfway. I'm going to use a cutoff wheel Dremel tool to do this. It's pretty thin. You could probably use a pair of snips or something like that as well. Now we can remove our bumper beam. So on each side, we're gonna have four 13 millimeter bolts. Once we have them all removed, should be able to pull straight forward and set it to the side. Over here on the driver's side only, we need to temporarily just kind of remove our horn. So if you look right there, we're gonna have a 13 millimeter nut. We'll go ahead, get our wrench on it. Not a ton of space, so using a box wrench like this is, uh, at least my preferred tool to do this. And once we get this nut removed, we can kind of just pull our horn off and kind of just let it uh, hang to the side for the time being. On the side of our frame rail, we're gonna have two factory holes that we need to enlarge all the way through. So we're gonna drill through this one, out through the other side. Now be careful when you're doing this because there are engine components relatively close on the other side. So what you can do is put like a piece of wood or metal, something, whatever you have laying around kind of as a barrier. That way, if you do accidentally punch all the way through, you know, your drill bit's not gonna damage those components. With that said, we'll enlarge both of these holes. Now, if you look right here, uh, underneath this square opening, we're gonna have a factory pre-drilled hole. Again, we need to enlarge it. And once we enlarge it, we need to continue as straight as possible and drill a hole through the back side as well. So I'll grab my bit and get that done to each side of our vehicle. If you look here where our bumper beam is mounted, we are gonna to have to remove some material along this uh, bottom corner on each side. Uh, there's a diagram and the instructions, give you some measurements, so I went ahead and drew those out. This is pretty thick uh, metal, so I would suggest using a Dremel tool or something similar uh, to get this material removed.
Probably not a bad idea to use a paint stick or some spray paint and just kind of put a layer of protection over that bare metal that we now have just to help keep it protected from any corrosion or rust, anything like that. Over here on the passenger side, we're gonna have this air conditioning line and we're gonna unfasten it from our frame. That way it'll give us some more space to get our base plate in there. So you can just grab a trim tool, something like that and unclip that uh, keeper there. Now, from my experience in the past, um, I've noticed just unclipping that line doesn't give us a ton of space and we could use a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do, if you look here, um, we're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts. If you pull these out, we then have a lot more wiggle room and it'll be easier to get our base plate on. Now at the next set of hands, you can grab our base plate, get it into position. Over here on the passenger side, you're gonna wanna go kinda next to your radiator hose and over your AC line. Everything is pretty tight, so you may have to, you know, kind of really take your time and work this in. you have it gonna pass that tricky part we should be able to kind of lift up and we're wanting to push the base plate against the bottom of our frame rail there just like that now you want to grab two four inch bolts and put two half inch flat washers on them on the threads you want to use some red loctite this is not included but you can pick up a tube of it here at each trailer and all of the hardware that we're gonna to use to secure the base plate is gonna receive that red lock tight. So the way this is gonna work is you're gonna line up the holes in the base plate with the holes in the frame rail that we drilled and push your bolts through. And once you do this, the base plate will kind of support itself while we get the rest of the bolts going. So all four of those bolts that we push through, where they come out, what you want to do is take a flat washer, a split lock washer, and then a hex nut. And we want to get all of these started uh, hand tight for now. Now from underneath the vehicle, if you remember the hole that we enlarged and then created a new one, that's where it comes through. What you're gonna do is take the four and a half inch by half inch bolt, put on your Loctite. You're gonna take this spacer plate, put it over like so. Then you're gonna feed the bolt through just like that. So here's where our bolt came through. And what you're gonna do is take one of these flat washers Place that over, a split lock washer, and then a hex nut. Again, we'll get these hand tight for now. Now with all the hardware in place and hand tight, we want to snug down these bottom bolts first. So I'll use a 19 millimeter socket and wrench to get that done. Once the bottom ones are snug, you want to come back and snug up these here on the side. Now you want to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. And we're going to use that same tightening sequence, starting with the bottom first and then the ones on the side. Now at this point, it would be a great time to install uh, some of your other flat toe components. And that's because we have all this extra uh, room to work. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be putting on the Roadmaster Smart Diode Wiring Kit, as well as the Roadmaster Invisibrake uh, Supplemental Braking System. And that's what I suggest doing as well. Get everything else done before we put it all back together. If you're not gonna be installing those components or you already have them in place at this point, what you would do 
is uh, more or less reinstall everything the opposite way that you removed it. You may have to trim out a small portion of the bottom of your grill on the fascia to clear the base plate, but other than that, everything pretty much just bolts right back together. We are gonna need to trim a little bit of our grill out on the fascia here to get it reinstalled. That way it'll clear some of our flat toe components. There is a picture in the instructions which you can reference, but I found a better look just kind of holding this against the vehicle and eyeballing it, making some marks where we need to trim. We can cut it out, see if it fits. If we need to remove a little bit more material, no big deal. We can go ahead and do that until we get everything to clear. So I made some marks here. Um, so this is pretty thin plastic. You could probably use a pair of snips or a Dremel tool, something like that. I'm using this um, mini saw here and I'll get all this trimmed out. So with our fascia trimmed, I got it in place. And then when you start these sides, the way that they're going to work, it's more or less, they're just going to snap kind of right back into position. So here's how the finished product looks. We did have to remove quite a bit of material just to clear our wiring, our base plate, our breakaway switch. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on up here. So this is how it looks. Now in our case, we had a big license plate bracket and it was definitely going to interfere with this, really no other way around it. So what I found is if you remove that big bracket um, and get rid of it. And in our case, there's actually some, some marks right on the bumper from the factory that allows you to line up where your plate can go. And we just drilled two new holes and the plate's gonna cover the existing holes from our bracket, so not a big deal. And actually when we put it on, it kind of covers up some of our trimming and everything else and just kind of gives us a cleaner appearance. And it's also going to allow everything to clear. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster base plate kit with removable arms on our 2021 Chevy Spark.